You and I till the end Don't need to pretend Again and again We'll stick together Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Joanne.com. Today is the start of our stitch along for spring 2022 with the Geometry Lessons Crochet Blanket. This is an amazing blanket. In person it looks really just as good as it does here on the photography and I'm really excited about this one because we have the waterfall stitch that is being introduced and it's the first time that I've learned it and my brain's just been spinning and spinning because I think it's amazing. Throughout the weeks we're going to be doing the waterfall stitches in different formats and we're going to be covering that very slowly step by step and this is a type of stitch that you can add to your resource toolbox for your mind in the future. You're going to be noticing all the different colors. There's one stable color and that is the off weight with Karen one pound yarn and then the other one that you see that has all the multiple multiple of colors is the Karen jumbo yarn in ombre. This is called lake mist and the other color that you see more of the oranges and the yellows is called sunset. So the yarn is changing its color itself so you don't have to worry about this box being green, this box being blue. It's the yarn doing the work. So without further ado let me show you the actual sample that we're going to be starting on with week number one and throughout this particular stitch along I'm going to be doing swatch work to show you exactly what needs to be done and you're going to be building it on top of each other as you go throughout the weeks. Let's take a look at the sample. So here's the sample and what you're looking at is the stable color of Karen one pound in the off white and then the other one is lake mist that's playing with each other. So why does this box here solid color and this box is not? And the reason for it is that in order to get this format when we go to start off we're going to be starting off right here with using off white as our main and then we're going to be introducing lake mist that falls down into the waterfall. So as it works its way across and the stitch work is, is working itself out the ball eventually will turn color on its own. So later on in here it will turn color. So what we have here is that once that color is introduced we then make the backdrop with the lake mist and then it will be the Karen one pound of the off white that will fall down into the stitch work. This is why the background here is worked in behind and this is why these boxes are a different color uh, within one. So as it's changing out you're going to notice that the colors will change with the yarn itself and it's absolutely amazing. So we're going to begin with this. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook and we're just going to work it step by step through the rows like we normally would do. So this is pretty cool, right? So in looking at this pattern it is a stitch sampler and I worked it out that there is no stitch repeat in this particular concept. The boxes are a different size versus these chevrons that are working up on an angle at versus these diamonds. So what we have here is that when you go to start this you'll be chaining 157. That will get exactly this particular concept. What I'm going to be doing though is teaching you in little swatch formats. So I'll just do a piece of it and then you'll carry the instructions all the way to the end of the rows and then we'll just carry it step by step like we normally would in a stitch long. Right. So just for uh, tutorial reasons I cannot film white on a white background so I will be switching out my colors so that you can see the stitches in more clear detail. Let's begin. So let's begin by looking at the diagram. We are going to create this first and then we're going to be introducing the waterfall that will fall down. Here is the stitch key so that you can follow the stitch work if this interests you. But what we're going to be doing is doing this step by step. So in order to do the waterfall and I have a sample here off camera and what we have to do is that we have to create the framework and then the waterfall falls into the stitch work itself. So we have to create these empty spaces which are very easy because once we start making them you'll be able to see exactly where they are and then we're going to be introducing then the waterfall stitch in number three and the waterfall stitching is all going to be the same as it falls down into those spaces that we've created. Let's begin. So enough chitter chatter let's get at her and please let's chain 157 together. As I mentioned I'm going to be doing a swatch with you but just chain 157 so just one two, three, four and five. Go all the way to 157 and meet me back here in just a moment. So you're ready to go. You should have 157 on your chain. Myself this swatch that I made has 37 chains so that I can demonstrate this in an even format. So I want you to go four chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one, two, three. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain itself and I want you to double crochet. So this will count as two double crochets. 
So the space that you just created creates this double crochet and then this one. I then want you to double crochet a total of three more on the chain. Stay on the back hump of the chain. So one, two, and three. And all we need to do is to go all the way across doing the same stitch work. I want you to chain five first. So one, two, three, four, and five and come back down to your chain and skip five. One, two, three, four, five. Go to the sixth one of the back hump of the chain and do the next five here as a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So I need you to repeat this over and over now. So let's do the repeat one more time. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then come in and do the next five to skip. So one, two, three, four, five, and come to the sixth one and double crochet the next five in a row. So we have the first one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So please do the same stitch repeat all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of the chain in a moment. Once you get close to the end of your chain and you're skipping the amount of stitches that you need, the last five in the chain work should be double crochet. And that's just a matter of keeping the stitch counts proper. So there should be five on this side to make it into a conclusion. So this will be the end of round number, or sorry, row number one and then all you just need to do is turn your work and now you can see the gapping spaces that you're going to be waterfalling into this later. Let's begin row number two. Let's begin row number two by maintaining exactly what you see. So if there's a double crochet, make it a double crochet. If there's a chain five space, make it a chain five space. So let's begin. Chain three to begin and the next four in a row will each be a double crochet. So we, so you can either count it or you can just look for the stitch work. I wouldn't count it. You can see it, right? So once that's filled in, you have a chain five space. So make a chain five space. So one, two, three, four, and five and then just jump on over to this double crochet over here and do the next five as double crochet. So match exactly what you see in the row below and this is row number two. I'll see you at the end of the row in a moment. So once you get all the way to the other side of your row, you're just filling it in and make sure that you don't forget that that's um, chain space that you made. That's also a stitch. So there technically should be five double crochets on the end. A lot of new crocheters forget this space here. So when you do that, make sure you go right into the chain work itself, never to a full space and that will be your fifth double crochet. This is where we're going to end this color. So let's just uh, get rid of it at this time and what we want to do is that we want to bring on our secondary color In your case it will be Lake Mist and so just get rid of this and we can weave in our tails later but let me show you how to do that now so that you can just do it as you go. To weave in the tails, I'd probably recommend that you use a tapestry needle. If you try to weave it in with your crochet hook, it possibly will fall out. So just take your tapestry needle and just go up underneath the stitch work itself. So don't interfere with the top edge and just slightly stay under. I would go back probably through the five that you created and when you pull the first time, don't change the shape. So make sure it's taut but doesn't pull in. So go through and then a slightly different path back in the other direction. And then finally one more time. So you go back and forth a total of three times and that should be good and you should be able to cut that down into the project so that it should never fall out. So this will be the only time that I'm gonna show you how to change out the yarns like that and then I will leave that to your capable hands. So let's turn our project now and let's begin 
row number three using the fun color and let's introduce the waterfall stitch. So let's begin and we are going to start with our secondary color to create the waterfall stitch. I don't see the point of using the same color because that's the whole point of the waterfall that it's supposed to come down so you can create your geometry shapes. Attach it to your very first one and what you can do is that I'm gonna show you a standing uh, single crochet. If you prefer to just attach it chain one. So if you attach it and then chain one and single crochet you can do that or you can create this is the whole point of a stitch along is that you can create new things by just putting a slip knot onto the hook first come into your first stitch and watch. This is a standing single so just grab the loop and pull through so that you have two loops onto the hook and then pull through two and that's a standing single crochet. I want you to put in a single crochet into the remaining four that you have left here before that space. So we have one, two, three, and four. You technically don't need to count it because you can see the space is going to come in. If you've gone over, over top of the straggler like I did then what you can do is just trim that out. Get that out of your way so you can do the waterfall stitch and we're gonna cover that very slowly. Now let's begin the waterfall number three. The waterfall stitch in this entire sample will be double crochets that will fill in these spaces with a single crochet top. So the waterfalls can be done in different formats. That's exactly what we're gonna do with each one of them no matter how deep the waterfall goes the top one will always be a single crochet. So I'm going to show you in real time what it looks like and then I'm gonna cover very slowly these five in a row so that you can understand it and then will be off to the races then through the remaining of the row. So let's show you real time what it will look like and then we will carry on. This stitch needs a bit of practice and that's what it will look like. You will see that these float on these particular pieces. I call these the bar, the chain five spaces and so they're floating on those spaces but they're anchored into this stitch below. So let's go very slowly on how to create this stitch and I'll do five in a row very very slowly with you. So if you need to uh, fast forward if you already know it then you can do so. Let's begin to do the waterfall stitch and the idea of this is that this is waterfall number three. One which doesn't exist is the top one that we're currently working with. The next space down is number two and the next space is number three. So that the more spaces that you have the higher the number of the waterfall that falls down. So when we do this we need to play with the front side and the back side all at the same time. And it's not hard but the motion of it is kind of difficult right in the very beginning. So let's play and that's the whole point of a stitch long. Because we have a single crochet top what we have to do is that we have to immediately start in this space and I want you to put the hook through that space and I'll take my time here. Once it's through, the, through that space I want you to wrap this yarn around the hook twice and what you're doing is you're getting ready for a double crochet that's filling in this space. So wrap twice. You should see this yarn strand on the hook twice. Do you see it twice? Okay, I'm gonna move on. I will show this again several times. So I want you to move the hook back through that space you just went through and use your fingernail in order to push it up the shaft. You never want these strands to uh, tangle over top of each other so when you wrap it around make sure it stays organized. If it is easier for you to use a hook that does not have a gripper that is also very handy to know. Here's the next space. Let's go. So now on the front side you're going to stick your hook through the next space down. So go in 
and back to the other side. Because this is the last space you wanna work with, what I'd recommend to you is just continue to begin to do the following. You're going to wrap the hook twice. I'll hold for a second. And because this is the last space, I want you to continue to turn the project over and look for the back hump of the beginning chain that you started with before. And it's the first empty one. And I want you to aim the hook into the back hump of that chain. Make sure everything stays organized on your hook. Okay, you ready to go back to the top? It's so easy, watch how we do it. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the stitch. It'd be like you were normally double crocheting. Now in the double crochet, when we yarn over, we usually pull through two loops that also exist. But what we have to do is pay attention to these chain five spaces. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. And don't be afraid to push that hook in to push it further down the shaft. Now, we need to yarn over and pull through the next two loops, but you see this chain five space? We have to pass by that as well. So when we go to yarn over, we're gonna go through these two loops and this space. So yarning over, go through the two loops and pass the space. And don't be afraid to push the hook in to make sure the space is behind the hook. This is what's securing it to that chain five space. So now you're gonna yarn over and pull through the next two loops. Now you're gonna yarn over, pull through those next two loops, but look, there's a chain five space. So anytime you see the chain five space after a set of two like that, you need to go through the two loops and the space. And once you're beyond the final chain five space, turn the work over and yarn over, pull through the final two to finish with a single crochet at the very top of this. You'll see that this is floating. You can move it if you want to or just leave it and move it all later. And this would be how you would create this. So I'll demonstrate it again a few more times slowly. Okay, you ready to go again? Here we go. Look for the space and I want you to stick the hook through that space first. Once you're through, I want you to wrap that strand around the hook twice. Make sure you can see it on the hook twice. I then want you to move that hook back through the space to the front side of the work. And use your fingernail and push down the shaft. This helps size, size the stitch to do that. We then come to the next space and because the one is underneath, it's the last space, when you push through the next space, you're going to wrap twice. Make sure you can see it pass over the hook twice. And because it's the last space, continue to turn the project over and look for the next available stitch here on the chain. So it's just a chain now, but in the future it'll be a solid stitch. And I want you to stick the hook through that available chain that you have. Keep everything nice and flat and organized on your hook. Now I want you to yarn over and pull through that stitch. And like double crochet, we yarn over, pull through two. But the only time that doesn't happen is that when you see this chain five space, you make sure you pass by it. So we yarn over, pass through the first two. We 
we yarn over, pass through the next two. Here's the space. So we're gonna pass that space too. So go beyond. This is what's securing it to the framework of your blanket when you pass that space. And don't be afraid to push that hook in to make sure that space is behind the hook. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the next two and you see the chain five space. So that means that you have to pass by that as well. And once you're beyond the final space, chain five space, turn it over to the good side of the work and pull through the final two. And that finishes with a single crochet. It's floating so you can just organize it, keep it together and these will all settle itself out. And we'll demonstrate this again in slow-mo. So here we go. I'm going to demonstrate it one more time in slow-mo and then we're gonna speed up. Here we go. Remember there's five of it, these. There's five um, stitch work here so there's gonna be five of these. So you're going in into the space. And how many times do you wrap the loop or wrap around this? Twice. Make sure you can see it. In time you won't really have to look for it. You'll know it. You'll feel it. And once that's wrapped you're gonna pull to the good side and what are you gonna use to push that up your shaft? That's right, your finger. Just push it and you see it's it sizes that stitch perfectly. So where are you gonna go next? That's right, that space below. So you're gonna stick it through and you're gonna wrap it how many times? Did you say two? Hopefully so. And because it's the very last stitch or uh, space before where you need to attach it, continue to turn the project over to the back side and look for the next available stitch. And you're going to stick your hook in that stitch. Or in that chain I should say. Okay. So now make sure everything's nice and flat on your hook. It's all organized. So you're going to yarn over and pull through that chain. It will be a stitch in the future but it's a chain right now. Okay, you're gonna yarn over and pull through how many? Hopefully you said two. So I can see two loops and this chain five space. So how far am I gonna yarn over and pull through? through the two loops and pass by that chain five space. And don't be afraid to move the hook in to confirm that that space is behind the hook. So I'm gonna yarn over again, pull through two loops and I can see two loops and a chain five space. So when I yarn over again, I'm gonna pull through the two loops and the chain five space. And that, that takes me to the top. So I'm gonna turn it to the good side here and yarn over, pull through the final two. You can continue to shift it but it will uh, balance itself out in the future. So what I want you to do is do the next two and I'm gonna move in real time now. So if you need to be seeing it slow, I'll have that there for you. But it really does not take very long to be able to make these stitches. And what you're doing is that you're creating double crochets in a vertical format instead of a horizontal and filling in the space work going all the way down. And once you understand this and once you get the motion, it's a bit awkward at first, you're gonna find yourself tightening up and finding your own personal tension with this particular stitch. So what I want you to do, whoops, I pulled through too many there. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue along and all the stitch work should look the same the way that this looks. 
yours may be slightly tighter. The original sample is much tighter. And what I want to do is that when I'm on these double crochets, I'm just going to single crochet myself to get myself to the next space where I'm going to waterfall the next five then that are gonna fill in that space. So now that I've here, I can waterfall the next five in a row, single crochet the next top and waterfall and you're gonna do that all the way to the end and this will take you to the end of row number three. So please do that and I'll be back in a moment. So as I come across on row number three, you're going to notice that everything here is all floating. So the rows above it actually help stabilize the positioning of it. So I wouldn't worry about it too much on if it's not uh, balancing out properly yet. It should balance out as you crochet more. So you're gonna come all the way to the end. Do not forget that chain three uh, that you started with is a stitch. So come to the top of that stitch and you're going to keep this color and move on now to row number four. In row number four, you got a nice easy row. So you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. So this helps stabilize that particular waterfall stitch and then I'll see you at the other side of this in just a moment. So this is the uh, row number four and we'll be back to start row number five in a moment. Coming to the end of number four, come into the final stitch and you're gonna keep this color and you're now going to progress to number five and six which will create the new framework so that we can have the waterfall stitch with the main color come down next time. So let's do row number five. So row number five, we're going to be establishing that chain work again that we had in order to create the space. So you're just going to begin by chaining three. That's your first double crochet. And the next four in a row will each be your double crochet. So let's start right here. So everything's in groups of five if you haven't figured that out yet. Once you have what you can see as five, so the chain three plus those four equal five, you're going to chain five to jump. So one, two, three, four, and five, and jump over five. One, two, three, four, five, come to the sixth one. If you can just follow the way that the coloring looks, you can also determine it that way, but I would probably count it at least the first time. One, two, three, four, five. Go to the sixth one away and you will double crochet the next five in a row. And what this is doing is it's putting the secondary color as your framework so that your main color will waterfall down into the space to create the checks that it's, it's promised in the pattern. So once you have your five in there, chain five, jump over five, one, two, three, four, five, go to the sixth one and do that. So please do this all the way across and I will meet you at the end of number six or the end of number five in just a moment. So I've now just come to the end of number five. You can see the space work has been created and now you're gonna turn and do row number six. Let's begin to do row number six. You need another space to work with in order to waterfall down. So what we have to do is we have to chain three to begin and do the next four as double crochet. So you're matching exactly what you see to create those extra spaces that you need. So in the future the waterfall will fall even deeper and so you'll notice that it will do even more of these spaces before we actually do the waterfall. So once those first five are in, you chain five and then jump on over and just get the first one there of the double crochet and match exactly what you see. So if it's a double crochet, put a double crochet. If there's a chain five space, place in a chain five. So please do this all the way across for row number six. As you come all the way across on row number six, do not forget that chain three that you start with is a stitch. So make sure that you just put in a, um, a double crochet right into that. So this will be the end of this color because we're gonna take the main color now and fall into this with the same level of the W3 waterfall. Let's end this color and I'll be right back and we'll start the other color back again and I'll see you in a second. So we'll start row number seven in a moment. And once your yarn is secured in, you're going to then turn it and begin row number seven. So the only difference this time is a different color that's doing the waterfall straight on down. I've already gone through it really slowly so just refer back to it if you need a refresher. At this point because you've done so many already you probably have it in your mind. So when you go to start I'm gonna do a standing single crochet. If you prefer to attach chain one 
and do a single crochet you can do that. It's your call. You are the creator after all. So each one of these double crochets are going to get a single crochet. So there's a total count of five in a row. And once I go over top of that I wanna get rid of that straggler. And clean up at the other one. So let's do the waterfall. So I'm not gonna go as slow as I did before and here's how we're going to do it. So come into the space, come to the back and wrap twice. Come back to the front, go down to the next space and wrap twice. And then turn it over. This time there is actually a stitch to work with. So come into the next available stitch. So before it was the chain work, pull through and then do exactly what you know. So pull through two, you pull through the two and the chain five space. Pull through two, pull through the two and the chain five space. And once you're at the top, turn it over and pull through the final two. So I want you to waterfall your fives so that you got one done. You gotta do four more here. Single crochet your tops and then waterfall and etc. So please do this all the way across for row number seven. I'm coming across to number seven. I'm not worrying about making sure where these are floating. I think they're gonna naturally fall uh, where they will and these single crochets that you're applying will help stabilize that. So this is the end of number seven. Let's turn our work and do number eight. Row number eight, we are going to this chain one and it's just a single crochet row. So just apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way across and we're going to then begin something new after that. So let's finish row number eight first. I'm finishing up number eight. We're gonna keep this color moving along and we're going to turn and do row number nine. So row number nine, we are going to keep the uh, same yarn color and we're just gonna create these spaces all over again. So chain three and then you do the first four in a row. So we have one, two, three and four and this is what's shifting the check look. Once you have that, so the chain three plus those four equal five. So just chain a five to jump. So one, two, three, four, five and go over to the sixth one. One, two, three, four, five is what you're jumping over and six is what you restart. You're just gonna do that all the way across. You've done that before and I will meet you at the end of row number nine in a moment and I'll see you here in a second. So coming up to the end of number nine, keeping this color on one more time and we just have to match for row number 10. Row number 10, we're just gonna create another space so that we can do the waterfall. So chain up three and then the next four in a row are each a double crochet. So you're just matching what you see. Once you have that done, there's a chain five space. So chain five to jump over that space. So one, two, three, four, five and then just come to the double crochet over here and I need you to repeat that going all the way over and this is row number 10 and I'll be right back in a moment. At the end of number 10 here, make sure you come into this one here. This is a chain three. So come to the top of that one and then this is the end of this color and you're gonna be switching it back with the other color that you're playing with to begin row number 11. So get rid of this and I'll be right back and make sure you turn your project and we'll start number 11 in a second. So number 11 we're coming back to the other color that we've been playing with and we're just doing exactly what you already know. The only difference really is the colors are just changing it's, and it's really quite awesome. I'm going to do my standing single crochet. You can attach chain one and single crochet if you prefer. It's up to you and you're going to single crochet yourself the remaining four that were left on that one there. And then you're going to start your waterfall stitch. So I'd recommend getting rid of any tails. It's just easier especially when you're doing the waterfall with how much time you have to spin the hook. And then you just come on down to the first space and begin the process all over. Because I've been doing a lot more, I've been getting a lot faster at it and I think you will be as well. Just gotta remember to keep looking at the back side there to come to all the way back to the top. And I just want you to fill in your spaces that you have. So you'll have your five waterfalls, you'll have your five singles and etc. And you'll do this all the way across for row number 11. 
So I'm coming all the way across on number 11. So you wanna turn your work at the end of this and we'll start row number 12 next. Let's begin row number 12. You're gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. This is technically the end of a repeating section and I'll meet you at the end of this and we'll talk about our repeat and then I'm gonna be picking up later on in the rows, uh, rows because you need to do a repeat before you can uh, carry on in this video. So I'll see you at the end of row number 12 in a moment. Here at the end of number 12 I'm just going to turn it over and you can just start stretching things out and moving stuff around. You probably have been doing that all along and what I want to do is talk to you about the repeating in order to carry on in this. So let's do that. So here in the pattern where we are is that we're at the end of number 12. So what we have to do for round our rows number 13 to 20 we need to do the same thing of going number 5 all the way through 12. I've already filmed it so you can go back in the tutorial to redo that if you would like to and then um, you can carry on. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna pick you up on the 21st row in just a moment using the main color which would be the off white in the sample and then we're gonna finish off these rows together here. So get your repeat done now from 13 to 20 and then we'll start on the 21st row in a moment. So after you get your repeat done uh, rows number 5 through 12 this will take you to the 21st row. At the end of the 20, uh, the 20th row I want you to finish off this color and bring yourself back to the main color which in the case of the sample it's off white. In my case it's this other color right here. So what I'm going to do is going to start you then on row number 21 in just a moment. Let's begin the 21st row and we're just going to attach to your very first stitch and we are going to chain three which will count as your first double crochet. So one, two, three and I need you just to double crochet yourself in every stitch going across. This will also help stabilize that pattern as well. So one double crochet in each stitch and I'll be back in just a moment. At the end of number 21 you're gonna come all the way to the very last stitch and then turn your work and we'll begin number 22 next. 22 just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. This is row number 22 and I'll be right back in a moment. Coming all the way to the end of number 22 don't forget that chain three there is a stitch so just apply it into the stitch work at the top of that chain three. Turn your work and let's do row number 23. 23 is back to the double crochet so just chain up three to begin and apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way back across. This is row number 23. Coming all the way across here on the 23rd row you're going to turn your work and begin number 24 which will be the conclusion of this section of the tutorial. Number 24 is the final for week number one of the geometry lessons crochet blanket. So just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch and what I would do is just hold, put your work aside and I'll see you next week and I'll be back in a moment just to conclude and wrap up for today. So one single crochet in each across. Coming all the way across and it's just one single crochet and this is where I'm gonna ask you to hold and I'll see you next time as we continue our lessons as we go and it's been awesome and I hope that you're pretty excited because we're gonna be doing something different than next time as we continue our journey with the waterfall stitch with the geometry lessons crochet blanket. I'll see you next week and have a great one and we hope to see your progress online on Facebook and make sure you use our hashtags of handmade with Joanne and the crochet crowd and we'll be glad to see you next time. Bye-bye.